Hello, this is Lorena, and I'm back with another Deluxe video. In this video, I will probably be doing mostly grinding. I, uh, how to get Aquaria back to level 2000, and I need to get to a Turbo Duel. And how that was, um, we're going to see if it's possible to get, I want to accomplish my goal, but I'm not necessarily sure it's possible to reach it. Now, obviously, I might still reach it, but it's just, I, I don't know anymore. I don't know. <laughs> obviously, though, Aporia has kicked my ass two times, and he has um, taken away my strategy that many times. I... If I get lucky, this is just a matter of RNG, you know? It's RNG based. If I if the RNG is on my side, in theory, I can get to where I want to be. Because RNG means that maybe he isn't going to get that card or I can destroy him fast enough. Now, obviously, if I don't destroy him fast enough, we get the disaster that was the last video, and the video before that. But, uh, I, I really do not want to believe that I cannot go further than that. However, I am, uh, racing against the clock as the event will end in a matter of hours. <laughs> Though, again, there's not much point to actually doing this. I'm just doing it because the event is going to end soon. So I may as well do as much of it as I feel like doing. Alright. Stop stealing Eva's catchphrase. <laughs> yeah, stop stealing his catchphrase. I don't even know what that means. Seriously, I have no idea. You know, there are a lot of things in this franchise that I don't fully understand. <laughs> you know, it's probably because I overanalyze it. I probably think too much about this shit. And it probably doesn't actually matter, but... To be honest, you know, catchphrase in the dub makes a bit more sense to me. At the very least, his duel against three was less confusing when I took into the when I took into account uh, just taking away someone's concept and understanding of you, you know you can take away a philosophy or a perspective or, or a belief apparently hmm all right so he's back he's back all right good now let's see how Let's see how far I can get. As as long as there is enough time, there is the opportunity. And if the opportunity to succeed is there, then I will take it. Although it is worth mentioning that I still lean toward pessimism. And I've been I've been called a pessimist before. Now, am I going to say that I'm not one? Well, I mean, I definitely don't want to be too negative. Because that's how I got into this situation. You know, the situation where I have Antidonia to begin with. But I, I'm pretty sure a lot of people are questioning if I actually have it or not. <laughs> now, it's... It's definitely strange when you consider that if things aren't going the way that you'd expect if someone actually has it. Like, when you look at everyone else that has Anhedonia versus me, you don't really see anyone with Anhedonia. Wait, what? Well, anyway, you look at other people with Anhedonia and 
I don't really seem to be in the same position they are, but I mean, again, a lot of those people have developed anhedonia from outside, from exterior sources. They got it through a substance, a medication, some treatment out there, whatever. They developed anhedonia from an external source. And that is where I believe I differ. Because again, my anhedonia was completely psychological. I got it internally. And it wasn't based on someone else doing anything to me. It was based on how I was treating myself and how that escalated. But, you know... Uh, that doesn't mean that I still did that doesn't mean that I've suddenly stopped having it because I I still have it it's just I assume that the, there is a difference between between something giving you anhedonia and you just developing it because you uh, messed up to put it lightly well I don't really think that just because I have anhedonia because of my own situation that I necessarily... Well, I, I think there's a way to develop anhedonia in the way that I developed it without it involving someone else giving it to themselves. Someone could give anyone else anhedonia just by doing what I was doing to myself. And that would make a lot of sense because... Because that's how I got it. So, I got it because I was abusing myself. And, it, and someone's abuse... Someone's abuser could... Could, in theory, give someone anhedonia because of how they treat their victims. But in my case, it was extra bad because, well, you can escape from your abuser. But if your abuser is yourself, well then, well then you may just be screwed. Which is basically what I thought, but I, I got better. Now, I still have anhedonia, but again, it's not as crippling. And that just comes down to how I recover from it. A lot of people cannot recover from it because an external source likely gave it to them. So something unnatural entered their system. And that, that would be why they're left crippled because how do they get that out? How do they, how do they get something unnatural out of their brain? I mean, especially if they need treatment for something, how would they remove that need so they can experience pleasure as normal again? Well, considering what I was doing to myself, it wasn't healthy, but it came from within. So it wasn't about something unnatural giving it to me as a side effect. And... I know there aren't many studies of anhedonia, but I do believe there's a difference between the type that I have and the type that everyone else on the internet has. And obviously, anhedonia is known to be a symptom of many mental health conditions, but this is an unfortunate situation. And why do I say that? Well, because my anhedonia seems to be a different variant. And also, my depression is not what, why I have anhedonia. My anhedonia isn't a side effect of my depression. It's not. I am not depressed. I am just pissed off. That's it. Now, could depression have contributed to me eventually developing anhedonia? Well, uh, having a, a severe 
diagnosis of anything can definitely make you vulnerable to some of the other symptoms. I know that my, I know that anhedonia is a symptom of depression, but I still think that it can occur separately from depression and even other mental health conditions in general. And again, I, I'm not going to drop this until there is sufficient evidence that I am wrong. If I could be shown that I'm wrong, well, obviously, I would do a quick Google search. And there would be a lot of people talking about this or that helping their anhedonia. And there would be so many comments about that that I would basically have to look into it. And I would then find out that I am wrong. And now I have been proven wrong. But that that is not something that is guaranteed to happen anytime soon. So everyone that I've met with anhedonia, besides myself, besides myself, has likely gotten it from external circumstances. And even being abused even being abused can even being abused can give you anhedonia and you do not need to be the one dishing out the abuse yeah all right i'm gonna put it i'm gonna uh make a note for some for some some trigger warnings Okay, so it's just, so I just have general trigger warnings here. It's been a while since I've included those. I probably should be going back to, I should probably include them in more of my uh, current videos. I've just been tired and worn out. And I do think that the time of the year is playing a role in that, especially because I haven't had the time to develop healthy coping skills for this. So I don't yet have the capability of dealing with this in a way that may be more healthy. So instead, I, I just, I, I block everything out. I completely leave out the trigger warnings because I cannot handle putting them in I cannot handle that kind of, uh, well, basically I'm going through a lot of bullshit and some of my usual empathy for, for the, for the, uh, well-being of others, it's not as much of a priority for me at the moment because I just need things out and unfortunately that does mean that it's it could be at the expense of others but if you if something i put in my videos is making you uncomfortable it would make sense to just stop watching that video i just i usually like to give people fair warning heads up but sometimes it, i just can't it's it's a very difficult situation to be in because I definitely don't want to be a bad person, but I mean, I do believe that some people, well, you definitely have a responsibility to know when you need to click off a video because it's not good for your mental health. I do want, I, I do feel like I've been slacking a bit on that heads up, but hopefully everything will be better by January or sometime in January and I can go back to my usual trigger warning stuff. However, it is worth mentioning that if it has nothing to do with the holidays at all, I might still be in this 
mindset even when the year starts. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm dealing with a lot of bullshit. And I cannot guarantee that it's exclusively because of the holidays. I mean, the holidays are a convenient scapegoat, but I cannot guarantee that's what's going on. But at the very least, I'm not the worst when it comes to triggers. I mean, I do have some videos with trigger warnings in them. And I'm sure that a lot of people know what I tend to go into anyway. Because if they see those trigger warnings, then they probably assume I've got other videos like that too. I, I've been trying not to go into too much detail, but uh, I mean... I started talking about how abuse can give you an anhedonia, and uh, I mean, I started abusing myself, which was not healthy at all, but that really doesn't change the fact that I still have anhedonia. The psychological side effects of having anhedonia, well, the more I heal myself on a psychological level, the less severe my anhedonia is. And I still haven't even covered the spiritual side of my anhedonia, which is some part of this could be ener energetic. Like, I didn't develop it just from a physical plane perspective. M maybe the anhedonia is just the physical manifestation of something that's going on with me from a higher plane. Now, I do think that there is a lot that I experience that can, that can be explained through physical experiences. There is a lot that I go through that normal logic can explain. But that's not the case when it comes to just anhedonia because... I do feel like some of this is energetic, like, I, I felt an energetic release at the end of two, 2020, which is interesting because 2020 was a very stressful year, stressful year for everyone. No one was spared, no matter your level of power, and because of that, because of that, I am deep, I am deeply aware of how weird it sounds that at the end of 2020, I would suddenly feel better. Okay, well, something, that didn't quite come out the way that I wanted it to. It just saying. Okay. Well, I, yeah, I just felt this energetic release at the end of the year, and I'm like, where did that come from and I generally do not know how I release more but I think the energetic release is an indicator that I heal from something now I don't know what I healed from but I know that it had to have been something that was difficult to deal with okay um I need a tuner do what what level tuner do I believe I'm more likely to pull? Do I believe that I'll pull a level four tuner? Hmm. I don't know, but I'm going to sit here and wait. All right, so I attack my opponent directly. I think I only got one. Yeah, I only got one tuner. Okay, I just need to pull another one so I can summon Shooting Star Dragon again. Although his deck is... It's getting more difficult to defeat. Okay. Nice. <laughs> nice. I, I said I will wait. And the wait paid off the next turn. <laughs> that was nice. Alright, so let's begin. Yes, let's begin. I hope that I get lucky. 
As in, let's not repeat what happened in the last two duels. Let's actually win this time. Are you with me? You say, are you with me? We should stop this guy. He's going to destroy everything if we don't. Okay, yeah, I've seen so many animation for these. For these monsters too many times. <laughs> Sometimes I even let them play out, which is weirder. Which is just weirder. <laughs> yeah, it's weirder. Okay. Um, I, I don't actually know what to do. I do not appear to be getting luckier. Hold on a second. Yeah, this could be bad. Very bad, just saying. But I think that I would like to take this risk. Just because. Alright, give me a second. I'm gonna put it on this shiny one. Now I know what he does. I know. It's very terrifying what he can do when he has the power to do it. <laughs> okay, let's go. He can take my secret monsters at any point, but <laughs> if he's in defense position, then he can't do shit. I attack you directly. I attack you directly. Alright then. I end my turn. So this is the third card. Wait a minute. Um, okay. Did, did he get to... Okay. Well, that was definitely not as terrifying as I thought it was at the beginning of that. And I was terrified. I mean, you guys can understand why. I, I mean, it just makes a lot of sense. Okay. I'm gonna put this other one on this monster right here. Okay, let's begin this. Oh, no, he's... He's not helping much, to be honest. Okay, I can attack two times there. Um, I activate this effect. Okay, two, three, three. Okay. I'm going to activate the effect that, that allows me to do piercing damage. By doing this, it means that I can't really, uh, multi- oh, hold on a second. Okay, Chaos Infinity. Oh, great. Yes, I continue to attack. Select an attack target monster. No, um... Oh, great. You have destroyed me. You had destroyed my plans. You're going to mess- you, you're going to pay for this. Yeah, that's right. You're going to pay for this. You're going to pay. You will not get away with what you have done. And I say as he keep trying to win. Stop trying to win. Stop. You are embarrassing yourself. I attack you again. Alright. That's all I can do for now. For now. We're going to see how I, uh, how I seem at the end of this. It's my turn. He can't do anything. Alright. Well, I activate this effect. And now, obviously, I can't do anything super overpowered. But, I mean, I can try to uh, do something. It, it's going to be difficult because I 
I, I, I can't go all out, so that I'm kind of limited. And then again, looking at my opponent's life points, <laughs> he's not exactly in a very good position himself. Okay. I activate this skill. Multiply by five. Let's do this. I attack you directly. That's right, you're, you've gone down. And now, I, I still do not know if I've actually been successful or not. So, I will have to look. I might have to keep going. Okay, let's check. Okay. I see. Hmm. I've reached damage, damage rank S. See, I've reached it. It's a pretty low threshold. It's a pr it's pretty low, but it's still above the threshold. So I'm still there. That's amazing. So uh, I did very, I did very well. And now I think I should stop here and just not do him again. Because believe me, I could and I should not do that. So anyway, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I will see you guys in my next one.